Well, hi everyone. I'm Joe Rithlin with a review of WWE SmackDown. Nine days away from Backlash, where the greatest wrestling match ever in the planet will be taking place. This was not a very good show. I know they're taping a lot of this stuff, and they're just getting whatever they uh, can in the can. And they should have put this show in the goddamn can because it was flushed down the toilet pretty goddamn quickly. There were a couple good things. But honestly, this was very much a by-the-numbers uh, SmackDown, much like Smack, uh, Raw has been by-the-numbers. Look... I'm glad that they put wrestlers around ringside. One, give them chairs. Two, don't have them so rehearsed. Vince needs to stop micromanaging stuff so much. Let people have genuine reactions because then wrestlers could be like, oh, you want to boo me? Here, get in here and I'll, I'll teach you a lesson. One, you get people on camera more, especially if they're not being featured on NXT TV. You could have squash matches. You could get some people over or you could get a, you know, you get like... Danny Bryan, oh, you think you're better than me? Okay, get in here. Let's have a match. Let's have this. Or AJ Styles. Some, you could do something like that, but whatever. They don't want to do that. Vince just wants to micromanage shit. Jeff opens talking about what happened, how he's driving. He gets hit. And then he has no idea what happens when he wakes up. He smells of alcohol. He knows he didn't relapse, but he didn't want to disappoint anybody because he's getting another chance. About his 20th chance. And I hope that Jeff is clean, but just, i they've given him too many fucking chances. I'm sorry, I, I wish him nothing but the best, but he has wrecked his career more times than I can count. He ain't the only one, but he's gotten a lot more chances than a lot of other people would have. <clears throat> so, uh, witnesses describe somebody with red hair and a red beard. Oh, it's obviously Seamus, and Seamus comes out and says, shut your bleeding traps. Um, I don't know why you would shut your muscles up, but then also says, well, you know, you're always blaming other people. Hi, I'm going to make things uncomfortable here, and especially later. Says, oh, Jeff, don't worry about disappointing your family. They're used to it, which is some pretty good stuff. Now, I railed against the stuff they did last week with all the bullshit, you know, that, that terrible opening thing with uh, Jeff Hardy in a drunk driving accident. That was stupid. I don't mind promos in this sense because I love the Jeff Hardy CM Punk feud because I sided with Punk when it came to that. And also Samoa Joe did this stuff, and they referenced it in Impact after Victory Road, and he came back just before Bound for Glory, him and Jeff Jarrett got in a bit of a scrap. Doing that kind of stuff. That I don't mind, because you can do something to build up to a feud. But doing the drunk driving stuff, you know, that whole bullshit last week was just too fucking far. And it was fucking stupid. It didn't help anybody. It certainly didn't help Jeff. It only made Jeff look weak. So, yes, it's not a feud I'm interested in. I, don't, I give two shits about Sheamus versus Jeff Jarrett, or Jeff Hardy, that is. Sheamus versus Jeff Jarrett actually might be interesting me more. Sorry, I suddenly had impact on the brain. Um, and then we get Otis and Mandy, and Otis puts on uh, Corbin's King of the Ring crown. He is crowning on camera. Gross. And then the greatest wrestling match ever in the planet, because Backlash is, has every match being the greatest wrestling match ever. That is going to be a card where they're going to be topping each other. Gross. Everybody's going to be human centipede together trying to top each other. This review has gotten a little bit weird. Moving on. Uh, we then have Otis with Mandy versus Corbin. Almost every Corbin TV match seems to end in a DQ. Like, or at least recently. Like, I mean, there are some where it's like at least singles matches. If they want to, you know, oh, we can't have uh, Corbin take a loss. But we don't want the person he's facing to lose either, so let's, or at least lose, like, you know, clean, so let's just do this. He uses a chair. Oh, you took something from me? I'm going to take something from you. So maybe we get Corbin's crown versus uh, Otis's briefcase, and we get them on a ladder, and you have to grab them and become Mr. King in the briefcase. I have no, uh, winner. I have no goddamn idea what is. Mr. King money. King cash money. I have no goddamn idea what's going on anymore. And apparently, evidently, Creative doesn't either. <clears throat> they're hiring for a new uh, head SmackDown writer. And no, there is no chance that I or any fan should apply for that. So anyway, Miz and Morrison are in a windowless, unmarked van, and they have security footage, and they have Spike Braun's drink, doing jackass skits. And then Gable and Mojo are, uh, may, are you know, talking backstage while Kayla's there, and Mojo's making short jokes. Mojo Rawley, who has a five-year deal with WWE, and I'm sure is a nice guy. He is a good athlete, and he is about as interesting as White Brett. He's just not an interesting character. I'm sorry, he's not. He, he, great for him on earning this money, and I hope they can do something good with him, but they've tried and tried and tried, and it just hasn't fucking worked. Um, and then we get Cesaro Nakamura. Nakamura with the Pearl Harbor job. Will you stop? 
and then New Day uh, evening the odds. So we are going to get Chad Gable New Day versus those three guys on the or, you know for a six man tag a little bit later. And then as Lacey's coming to the ring, Sonya fists her from behind, and then we get that match a little bit later with a lot of fisting action, some hair pulling, some scissoring action, and it sounds like a movie I saw once by mistake. But also, it was actually a pretty good match because Sonya is on the rise. Lacey has also greatly improved. She can do a moonsault. Can Charlotte do a moonsault? Charlotte cannot do a moonsault. She can't do a good one. Um, so they had this weird ref bump where the ref hurt his leg, and if he really did hurt his leg, I feel bad. If he didn't, it was a really awkward spot. Um, but anyway, Lady Ref Jess steps in. I think it was like the second or third match she was part of. Um, but at one point, uh, Lacey and Sonya hit each other. They're topping each other. Go on. And Cole saying, I didn't know Sonya had this in her. Well, Cole, I don't want to know what you're imagining, why you would say that. And then Mandy suddenly shows up on the screen. This is after Sonya had said she was done with Mandy. She'd beaten her twice and she's done with her. She's done with her and she's going <clears> to <throat> beat up others and go for the championship. Okay, cool. Mandy distracts. Mandy's supposed to be the face. And she distracts her. And then, you know, Lacey's fist just gently touches uh, Sonya's face and skin. I'm really fist, fist crazy in the head. I'm starting to wonder if there might be something slightly wrong with me. Slightly wrong with me. Moving on. Uh, Lacey gets victory with the woman's right. And so, okay, are they continuing the Mandy-Sonya feud? Why? I mean, to what end? Sonya should be the bigger star. Now, I'm not saying that Mandy doesn't have talent. She does. But if the feud's done, give, I don't know, give Mandy Carmella to beat. Give her some quality wins. Bring some women out of the crowd or whatever and have her beat them. Something like that. Mandy can be a star. She can be something. She's better in the ring than I, would, than I gave her credit for originally. She can be a star, but you need to push Sonya. You really need to push her in this didn't help. And I'm not saying Lacey shouldn't be a star either, but Sonya should be the one they push. So moving on. Um, Kayla and Braun, and then Kayla got slimed. Apparently Nickelodeon has taken over SmackDown. This was for nobody. This did not serve a purpose. Miz and Morrison, who look like they're having a blast, were uh, laughing like 12 years old. 12 year olds, that is. It just didn't work. And then Styles and Brian, um, they're going to be Grand Marshals at a NASCAR event. I think Styles might have thought there was a different kind of grand he was going to be there, but moving on. Uh, Renee hosted this whole thing where it's an Intercontinental Championship Summit. Brian wants to defend the title every week. Styles uh, says that he's going to give Gulak a handout or a hand something else. I'm not exactly sure. But it's part of the PowerPoint community, and he faces Gulak, and it was actually a pretty good match. Well wrestled and everything, and Gulak shockingly won. Graves at one point, however, did say that he didn't realize Gulak could go this deep. That instantly made me think of the young uh, red-headed maid character from American Horror Story Season 1. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Alexandra Breckenridge, I believe her name is. Um, but anyway, <coughs> Gulak pin styles, good stuff. Maybe they add Gulak to the uh, match next week. I don't know, I think they already taped it, so I don't think so. Ms. Morrison then wrecked Braun's car. Uh, Buick Grand, I guess, or something like that. It's a really small car for Braun. Um, and I, Buicks aren't traditionally small, but it just looked really small for Braun. They wreck his windshield. New Day, Chad Gable versus Nakamura, Cesaro, Mojo. Kobe got rocked a whole lot, and then a uh, big ending or something, pin Mojo. I tuned out of this match because I didn't really care. Chad Gable, his name's Chad Gable. They either need to change his name back and treat him seriously or they need to let him go so he can go, I, I don't care, AEW, New Japan, New Japan preferably, I think he can make a killing there. I don't want him to lose any serious income at all. I just want him to be taken uh, seriously, and he really could be somewhere else. So then we get the match flow that recaps Brian and Styles, that whole thing from 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Bliss Cross Applesauce versus Bailey and Sasha. So, Nikki, at one point says, Bailey, you belong to me. Is Killian okay with this? I mean, I'm curious. I'm not kink-shaming, but I'm, but I'm just honestly curious. And, okay, here's where the thing's bullshit, because Bailey and Sasha win the tag titles. Okay. However I, however I fucking feel about Alexa in the ring, her and Nikki seem to be working pretty well. They also seem to be angling towards the Iconics, facing... Um, Bailey, or not facing Bailey, but facing Bliss and Cross. So if they just nix that, unless you're going to have the Iconics beat Bailey and Sasha at Backlash, what is the point of this? Like, really, what is the point of this? 
And I would argue putting the titles on Bailey and Sasha don't really do anything because they weren't all that interesting as tag team champions before. They they just weren't. I mean, and that may be an unpopular opinion, but that's my that's my take. So, okay, cool. The Iconics may win them at some point, but I don't know if it's going to do really any good. It kind of just throws a wrench. It's like they just gave up and they were like, okay, shit, title switch, what the fuck. Um, not a very good episode of SmackDown. Anyway, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.